So Howard, why should any client in Asia today be considering residency or citizenship planning? I wouldn't argue that they should, but if they are, there are a lot of um, quite attractive options out there where you can get the right to live somewhere else as a permanent resident with a minimum of procedure and a minimum of investment. Um, and all countries compete to attract wealthy individuals. And uh, at the moment, there are quite a lot of um, schemes, if you like, out there which aim to do just that. And Howard, what options are interesting today? Um, we're getting a lot of interest in particular in Portugal because it makes it easier than most. And for uh, an investment in Lisbon property, which seems to be one of the most, uh, the, uh, one of the ones which is increasing in value the fastest at the moment of euros half a million, they will give you a permanent residency. And unusually, um, to qualify for nationality, which might be your next objective, so that you have um, a passport issued by a stable country, they don't actually require you to live there to start clocking up the qualifying five-year period. There are actually a lot of um, nationality schemes where, in theory, you can apply for nationality after a certain period of time of holding the legal right to reside, but in practice you will only be granted the passport if you've actually resided there. And for many people, they don't wish to move, they just wish to have the right to move at some stage in the future if they need to due to political unrest or, or any other factors. So P Portugal's particularly attractive because the level of investment is quite low and the procedures are very simple and the investment that you're required is probably a great investment anyway, but that may be for others to say. And then combined with that, Portugal also offers a special tax category for those who actually go and live there, which in simple terms allows you to live there 10 years tax-free. So those two things combined have generated an awful lot of interest and uh, an awful lot of clients who have actually taken that out and, and gone down there, purchased property and taken out what's known as the non-habitual residency, which is the tax-free holiday. Um, there is some urgency on doing this at the moment because it is rumoured and fairly certain that by the end of this year you'll no longer be able to invest in Lisbon, Porto or Algarve property so you'll have to look further afield where the investment climate is less certain and for the tax year tax free status um, very soon they're going to require you to pay 10% tax on pension income remitted to Portugal and are talking about uh, charging dividends to 10% tax as well. So there's a window of opportunity to buy the Lisbon property with the 10-year tax break, which is almost certainly going to end at the end of the year, if not sooner. So we're seeing a lot of a flurry of interest in both the Golden Visa Scheme and the Non-Habitual Residence Scheme right now. And why are they changing the rules in Portugal? Well, there's a number of things at play, but I think the, the biggest single reason is the EU neighbours don't like it very much. Um, whereas they put conditions upon gaining residency and nationality in their own country. Uh, if Portugal does it much easier and cheaper, or just easier, they get entry into those other countries anyway once they've got residency or nationality, so they don't like it and they want common standards or standards which are aligned. So that's one reason. Um, the second reason is that it's undoubtedly led to a considerable rise in the value of Lisbon property in particular, in the price range 300,000 to 500,000 because what's tended to happen is that the 350 euro valued property has been put up to 500 and that's put pressure on the whole market at least at that level. So um, locals are being priced out and that's a, a common factor when you get rich people coming to live in your country. Um, those who are less well off tend to think that they are priced out and in this instance they also feel that you've got a lot of rich people coming there who are paying no tax which is entirely correct there are and they feel that that's most unfair um, it can be argued and probably would be argued that their tax burden is actually reduced by having these wealthy people putting money around the system and creating wealth for everybody but nevertheless, you can see that this is a, an argument which is going to occur and does in every country which grants special tax statuses. And to what extent is this interesting to clients living in the UK? Well, for people living in the UK, it's a very interesting proposition because although they don't need any special immigrant status at the moment to go and live in Portugal, 
by the end of the year they will do, so they will have to apply as non-EU persons. So although, strictly speaking, we've left the EU, um, there is going to be little change until the end of this year, and then after that, everything changes. So for an EU, uh, for a UK person who wants to go and live in Portugal, now is the time to apply for a resident status, which you can get really as of right, and with little formality and no investment. Come the end of the year, you will have to go through the normal immigration channels like any non-EU person. So there's a rush to get in before that window of opportunity closes. There's also uh, the factor that uh, the tax rate for those people is going to go up from 0% to 10%. So if you get in before those changes, they have announced that the pre-change deal will apply. So you'll still be on the zero tax rate. So those two things combined suggest that there's a big rush to get in there if you have any intention of taking advantage of this opportunity at any time, really within the next 10 years. And Howard, what are the considerations for UK expats living abroad? Well, the considerations are the same, but I think expats by their nature tend to drift home at some point or close to home. And certainly we're seeing a lot of people who are finding that um, perhaps political unrest in Hong Kong and the coronavirus is putting a neat full, spot, full stop to their stay here. So speeding up the decision to move back closer to Europe or into Europe itself. So again, the, the same considerations apply for them. You've got a window of opportunity in Portugal until the end of the year. We suggest you take it, even if you're not sure that you need it. Why not? It's very quick and simple to take out this residency. You may want it in the future. Why not? Unless you're adamant you're never going to want it, in which case, of course, you'd be completely wasting your time.